Welcome to Ascending with Jamie Alexander. It's your girl, Jamie Alexander, where we ascend in all things faith, prayer, and love, and prophecy. Listen, I'm so excited, y'all. I'm so excited to be back on YouTube. Listen, because you're probably like, where has she been? What's going on, sis? Where you been? We're missing the videos. You said you were going to drop some videos, and we haven't. I Listen, I got you, okay? I got you. When I tell you God has been pouring so much in me the holy spirit has been pouring so much in me i've just been taking it all in how many of you know that when the lord gives us a word he wants it to work through us first like no lie like the words that he has been giving me i had to chew on them first before i could come on here and share because i don't want to be a hypocrite i don't want to be on here where i'm giving you a word and i'm not doing it the bible says not only be hearers of the word but doers of the word as well so i want to hop on real quick because why may is mega this is the whole point of this video may is mega and it's not another cliche. You probably heard all these other prophetic words for the month of May. You know, May is moving and and may the Lord bless you in the month of May. But the Lord whispered to me in the month of April that May is mega. And guess what? I had no clue of what he's talking about until a couple of days ago when he started to download all of the things that he wanted me to share for this month. So every weekend... I'm going to drop a video for the acronym of MEGA, okay? MEGA, M-E-G-A. And do a little, couple, little bit of teaching and prophesying and praying as well. But I just had to come and be obedient and get this out so that we can ascend, right? Even though I have not been making my YouTube content, but I'm back. I'm ready to continue to help you ascend in all things faith, prayer, and love, and prophecy. Um, I'm so excited, so excited. So if you are ready to dive in this thing, let's go. All right, y'all. So the M, the M in mega, the Lord gave me, he said, merciful, merciful. How many of you need the mercy of God? We all do. I know I do. I know you do. But I wanted to break down this topic of merciful and God's mercy and why we need mercy and the meaning of mercy. So when we think of mercy, by definition, we just automatically think of God's compassion. We automatically think of, you know, not giving us what our sins deserve. We automatically think of God's loving kindness and his forgiveness, right? And so while as I was studying the M for mercy or merciful, I found out that the word mercy is in the Bible, I believe, like 261 times, right? And so that's a lot of times that we are in need of God's mercy and we continuously to need God's mercy. And, and overall, the scope of it, mercy is basically a concept, right? It's a concept of God's divine attitude. It's a concept of God's divine strategy and his character, like when we look at from beginning to the end, Genesis to Revelation, we see countless of times that the people in the Bible needed God's mercy. Even now, his people need his mercy. And I wanted to dig real quick in what is mercy, why we need it, and why it's important for us to get back to that place of mercy. Because listen, if you have been paying attention to the signs and times of this world, if you've been paying attention to what's going on in this country, in your country, you see that we need the mercy of God, right? We see that we need the full mercy of God. This world has become dark. And I always say that the darker it gets, the lighter bright should be shining, right? So we're going to see how we need to start gravitating and crying out to, for God's mercy. We'll see in the Bible how Daniel cried out for mercy. But before I get too deep into my message, mercy, again, is shown in the Bible 261 times. Now, when we look at the word mercy, I found out not only that it's in the Bible 261 times, but it's mostly found in the book of Psalms. And 
What Bible character comes to your mind when you hear the book of Psalms? Don't worry, I'll wait. Because, baby, if you said King David, you are absolutely right. But upon research and upon, upon studying, I'm trying to figure out, you know, um, not only King David. King David wasn't the only one who held authorship to the book of Psalms. There were many other authors um, that held writings for the book of Psalms. But for mercy in particular, for mercy in particular, King David asked God for mercy all the time. Now, listen, we know, listen, we know King David was a little ratchet out there, okay, in those Bible streets. He needed the mercy of God, okay, when you intention, you know, you get your friend pregnant and friend, your friend baby mama pregnant, a friend wife, sorry, that was that was his wife at the time. He gets him pregnant and, and here pregnant and have him go out there in a war and have him killed and like, it was, David life was a high mess. Okay, but no judgment because how many of our lives at some point been a hot mess? I know I can. I I can't be quiet on that subject. Hey, I my life was a little it can get, sprinkle a little ratchetness up in there, but that's why we need the mercy of God. And so we find that King David is asking God for mercy. He's begging God for mercy. And I want us to take a look real quick if you have your um, Blue Letter Bible app, because if you've been following on along with the Bible baths that I've been doing a couple of months ago, you notice that it's one of the tools and resources that we use in the uh, Bible. So you go to your Bible app, Blue Letter Bible app, and let's look up the word mercy. And we'll see, like you said, all those scriptures with the word mercy in it. And so we see how in Psalms, David is pleading for mercy. He is pleading for God's mercy. And not only is he pleading for God's mercy, we see that in Daniel 9, da Daniel is praying for God's mercy, right? He's praying for God's mercy. Let's go to um, Daniel 9. I'm typing it in real quick so I won't misquote for you guys. But Daniel 9 is called the Daniel's Prayer. He prays and he intercedes on behalf of a nation. He says, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, and all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. We and our kings... Our princes and ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against you. The Lord, our God, is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Daniel is praying and interceding to God, letting him know, God, hey, we have sinned against you. And I'm going to remind you of your character. I'm going to remind you of... Who you, your divine attributes. I'm going to remind you, God, that even in the midst of my mess ups, even in the midst of this country falling away, even in the midst of my house not acknowledging you, even in the midst of me falling in sin, God, you are merciful. God, you are loving. Your loving kindness does not fail us. And so he goes on and talks about the sins of the nation and the people. And so Daniel 9, when you have time, I want you to really read Daniel, the whole chapter of Daniel 9. Because it's truly a blessing. And I believe that if we just have that posture like Daniel had in Daniel 9 and cry out to God, we'll really see us how the Lord wants us to move towards his mercy in the month of May and in Mega May. God wants us to move 
towards his mercy in mega may that is the m that i want us to focus on for this week of may that lord in spite of my situation my shortcoming my falling i messed up i need you you are merciful and what is mercy you don't you draw your compassion towards me um i want to talk also about how in new new covenant the lord knew that we needed his mercy so he did what he outsmarted the devil created this redeeming plan and said you know what i love my people too much i don't want us to be separated like this because he is god and because we sinned in the beginning it separated us from god god is like you know what i need to be back with my people. I created them. I created them in my image. I'm not the type of God where I'm just separated from my people. God never wanted to be where he's God and, and he created us and we can go over here doing our own thing. No, he's he wants to live among us. We see in the Bible plenty of times before they ask for kings how God wanted to be with us. And so... Here comes Jesus on the scene to reconcile us through the blood on Cal that was shed on Calvary to get back in the mercies of God. Hmm, I hear you, Holy Spirit. He reconciled us through Jesus Christ. And so what does reconcile mean? It means to appease. It means to no longer... Um, be separated it means to consolate to oneself and so you're probably thinking what does consolate mean well I'm glad you asked consolate means to no longer be angry and so you probably ask because I ask these questions well why would God be angry well let's go back to the beginning God imagine imagine y'all imagine somebody just Built you this house, right? Furnished it. Gave everything that you needed to have in it. Just decked out. You have to do nothing but manage it. And here comes along a deceiving spirit to cause you to turn your back on, really, on the one that gave you all of this. That would, that would I, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. That would make me angry. That would make me angry because it's like, hey, I I gave you everything that you needed. Um, I'm we we in covenant together. Why would you do the opposite of what I asked you to do? Like everything you need, you got everything you need. And God gets angry and say, you know what? Y'all gone, God had to stand on business. He said, you know what? I'm just giving y'all my little my little sprinkle of ascending with Jamie Alexander uh, sprinkles on this word. But y'all get what I'm saying. He kicked Adam and Eve out the garden. And you know what? Blocked it with a sword and had the angel to guard the gate and they had to go. God is, God is angry. He was angry that we disobeyed him by eating of the fruit that he told us not to touch. We can have all these other things and we decided to disobey. So he gets angry like any other parent would. If you're a parent out there and you're telling your kids to don't do something, you can do, you can, you can get all of this and they still disobey. That anger is going to flare up because it's like, why? Are you not listening to me? And so I get God's anger. I get it. I get his anger. But he's slow to anger now to the point where, you know what? He's saying, I don't want to be angry with my creation. I got to get them back in my grace. I got to get them back in my presence. And so here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus reconciling us back to God, atoning, being an atonement back to us so that we can be back in the presence of God. 
And so by Jesus Christ reconciling us back to God, this is why we need God's mercy. When we sin, it separates us from God because God is holy and he's not going to change for nobody. Like he's God. We as believers, as people, especially in these end times, y'all, we have to get to a place to say, you know what? I got to get back in the presence of God. That How do I get back in the presence of God? Well, I'm glad you asked. You receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You beg for God's mercy. You ask for his mercy. You go in prayer first with mercy. And we're going to pray at the end of this. But I want us to move towards mercy. Move towards God's character of even in the midst of you messing up. Even in the midst of you supposed to be fasting and you messed up. Even in the midst of you fornicated and you supposed to be practicing celibacy you vowed to God to practice celibacy whatever the mess up is God is saying I have mercies that are new thank you Holy Spirit he says my mercies are new every morning what scripture is that if somebody know put it in the uh, comments but he says my mercies are new every morning that means we can go to God as long as we have breath in our bodies, as long as we are waking up and giving and, 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 and opening up our eyes. Lamentations, um, chapter three, verse 22 to 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The only time the Lord's mercy is going to actually come to an end is when we take that last breath. Is when the trumpet blows and now it's time for judgment. But while we are on this earth, mercies are fresh every morning. And you're probably thinking, well... I didn't do nothing. Uh, I'm living my life. I don't need God's mercy. Uh, yeah, you do. We all need God's mercy. We all need mercy from somebody. It could be something that you've done to someone and you need their mercy. You need them to get to forgive you. That's mercy. You need compassion. You, we've all messed up. We've all, the Bible says, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. I, Prophet Jamie Alexander, has fallen short of the glory of God. I needed his mercy. I need his mercy every day. This world, this country, America needs God's mercy. We have to get to a place to cry out for God's mercy. Get back in the presence of God and say, you know what, God, we have not been paying attention to the prophets. We have not taken this Christ walk seriously. We have not taken our salvation seriously. Anyone that has given themselves over to Christ and thinking they can still do the things of the world, ask God for mercy and get back on it. Any prophet, apostle, teacher, evangelist, pastor out there that has taken that title in vain. We need to beg for God's mercy that he does not give us what our sins deserve. Amen. M for mega in May stands for moving towards God's mercy. We need mercy in this hour. And real quick before I end the video, I want us to pray Daniel 9. And I really want you to hear the words and I want you to meditate on Daniel 9 and what he says in the Daniel prayer. It's lengthy, but I believe I pray this prayer myself all the time because it is a great staple of begging or asking God for God's mercy and him granting us the mercy. Amen. Amen. So let's pick back up on verse Ten. We have not obeyed the Lord our God. Actually, no, it's not verse 10. Yeah, it's verse 10, I think. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey. And when you do 
read Daniel 9. Instead of saying Israel, put America if you're from America. Whatever your country that you're from, put your country there. So I'm in America right now. So I'll say in verse 11, all America has transgressed your laws and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing on us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like has been done to America. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us, yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord, our God, by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster on us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. Now, Lord, our God, who brought out our people out of Egypt, with a mighty hand, and you have made for yourself a name that endures to this day. We have sinned. We have done wrong. Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger. Remember, consolate. We said that definition, consolate. I want you to write this down. Consolate, C-O-N-C-I-L-A-T-E. Consolate means to be angry. But through Jesus Christ, we was reconciled meaning God no longer being angry. So he says, and remember this is Old Testament, so this is before Jesus Christ came on the scene. He says, I, for our sake, look with favor on your uh, desolate sanctuary. Give ear our God and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests uh, because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. I mean, that is so good. Let me read that again. Meaning we do not make these requests because we are righteous. We're not praying because we're Christians. We're not praying because of our own works. God, we're praying and asking because of your great mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act for your sake. My God, do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. Daniel reminds God of him. He brings the prayer and turns it, remembrance back to God. God, you are merciful. God, you are loving. God, your loving kindness. God, it is you. You remember your word to your people. Don't ruin us. Don't ruin us as a country. Don't ruin us as a city. Don't let the good suffer with the bad because of who you are. This is so good. We want to move towards mercy in this hour, y'all. Why? Because I've seen and other prophets have seen the judgment and wrath that is pending if we do not repent and ask God for mercy. So the month of May, pray for mercy this week. Pray for Lord's mercy. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer, people of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that your word is true. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust that even in the midst of our shortcomings and our falls, God, it's your mercy that we remind you of who you are, your character, your divine attribute of mercy. You extended mercy countless of times. God, we ask for your mercy over America. Put your, put your country in the comments. We ask for mercy over Nigeria. We ask for mercy, Father God, over Canada. We ask for mercy, God, hallelujah, over the things of North America, South America. We ask for mercy over Japan and Israel. We ask for mercy over Jerusalem. We ask for your mercy, oh God, not because of our righteous acts, but because of who you are, because you are a merciful God. Father God, your Bible says, and Lord, in the Beatitudes, Jesus pre preached. He said, bless are those that are merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Father, we thank you, Lord, hallelujah, in Matthew 5, hallelujah, that we, if we show mercy, oh God, hallelujah, you will show mercy 
back into us, oh God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who reconciled us back to you so that you would no longer be angry with us. We receive your mercy on today, oh God, and we bless your holy name for it. We thank you and we love you. We will move more towards your mercy in this hour, God. There is nothing that we can do, Father, nothing we can say to draw, Father God, hallelujah to be perfect but father god because there is only one perfect person that will walk this earth and his name is jesus christ and so father god through jesus christ i ask for your mercy oh god for those that are watching oh god i ask that you extend the mercy in their situation in my life oh god i ask that you extend me mercy father god hallelujah as we father god continue to press towards the mark of the high calling of god in christ jesus we are not perfect we admit god but we have not obeyed fully of your instructions oh god we ask for your great mercies on today, God. Your mercy are new every morning, every time we breathe, every time we wake up. God, thank you for your mercy. Every time, oh God, we get in that car. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Every attack the enemy has planned against us that you did not allow. Thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. And we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Move towards God's mercy. Amen. Move towards God's mercy. Move towards his mercy. We need his mercy like never before. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. Share it out for those that are expecting a mega May. For those that are willing and ready, hallelujah, to hear the word of the Lord through this channel, Ascending with Jamie Alexander, where we talk about all things faith, prayer, and love. See y'all later, and thank y'all so much for tuning in. Catch you at the next video. Bye. Listen.